I usually taste it after she is done. But being here and listening to all the details, now I'm tasting all of the spices, all of the... My suggestion is before you eat, watch the whole video and then eat. a city etched in the memory of many Palestinians as the Jewel of Palestine. Also the city where my grandfather and namesake Ahmed Shabuddin was born and raised. A poor city nestled on the Mediterranean coast that became a hub for cultural exchange and innovation in historical Palestine. Out of Yaffa comes so much of Palestine's culinary exploration and the unique palate that we've all become so accustomed to. For this very special episode of Turning Tables, Palestinian Cooking with a Twist, I'll be joined by the amazing Nadia Tomali, straight from her kitchen in Seattle, Washington, as she shares her special Spiha Yafawiye recipe. We're gonna learn how to make the dough with three simple ingredients and to make the perfect beef or lamb, meat combination, I should say, for a devastatingly delicious Spiha. Let's eat. Where did you learn to cook? Palestinian cuisine? So I learned most of the stuff actually I learned is from my grandparents, from my grandma and my aunties, uh, and then you know later on from my mama uh, in, in Amman. Uh, and then um, I also am lucky, very, very lucky to have a mother in law who is an excellent cook, you know. All her food is very delicious. Actually, the recipe that we're going to be making today is something that I learned from her and her family. What is the recipe? Just because I'm, I'm getting lost between all these incredible meals we're preparing. What is your uh, recipe today and why do you love it? So it's called Sri Hayafawiya. So it's a very famous... Uh... My favorite, sorry, I had to interrupt you. Sri Hayafawiya, <laughs> that's like what I grew up eating. Okay, amazing. So you're going to teach me how to make my childhood food. And we're using a very simple dough, Ahmed. Uh, the dough is basically the basic dough that every single Palestinian make, you know, in the old days, you know. It's just a flour, a little bit of salt, uh, you know, water, warm water, lukewarm water, and then, of course, always, always with lots of olive oil. <laughs> I'm so excited. Let's, let's start with the basics. What do you need to do? T take me from the top. What are we going to do? So we're going to start with, I have 500 grams of all-purpose flour, and I'm just going to add them to my stand mixer here. And really, really, you can do this. Nobody had stand mixers, you know. <laughs> Our ah. grandparents did not have that, but I love, of course, the technology is always, you know, nice. You can all definitely do this easily uh, with your hand. And I'm adding one teaspoon of salt. And I'm just gonna give it a quick mix here. So you don't need baking soda. You don't need the baking soda. You don't need uh, yeast. You don't need anything. Literally, Ahmed, it's three ingredients. Yeah. Here I have about a um, cup and um, one third. You know, we could we could use like one cup and one third, or a maybe uh, one fourth to one third. So I'm gonna start slowly adding it. And I always like to keep natural next to me, so I can kind of scrape, you know, the sides of. Uh, my mixer. Makes sense. It sounds like your technological machine, I'm <laughs> It should be like that when you mix the Hayafawiyya, yeah? Yeah, but yeah, in place of all the grandmothers and the aunties being like, la, 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 we hear the. I, I like that. Everything needs to be collected, you know, becoming one giant ball of dough like this. You know, I like to give it a few, you know, rolling on the surface like that. So um, the dough will rest and become even a little bit softer. So you want it to be soft like that. Okay. And I, as I said, Ahmed, um, I did prepare, uh, I'm going to keep this one. I'm just going to cover it like this. See, this is the traditional way with, with the hands. Like, hi, <laughs> hada kill, the anime tawad aleha, seeing the woman with the hand. This with the hand, yeah, of course, you know. Uh, so, we're gonna, I'm just gonna add it back to my bowl. And then I'm gonna add a sprinkle of just a drizzle, sorry, a drizzle of olive oil on top of it. And make sure that it's all covered with the olive oil, like this. 
I'm gonna cover it and just set it aside. It's usually half an hour, whatever, you know. I made this actually more than half an hour. The one that you have, I prepared. So this is before. And I'm gonna show you the one that we have ready that will be working on it in a little bit. And this is after. And I'm just gonna show you how, you know, smooth and soft. I see, I see. Well, I mean, that, that little drizzle of love at the, at the end is important. Absolutely, absolutely. I'm actually gonna cover this because we're gonna work on our meat portion. I'm using both um, a mix of lamb and beef, and you can use only lamb, you can use beef. You know, I like the flavor from both of them, so I'm just gonna use both of them and mix and I mix and I have about 600 grams of, um, of beef and lamb. And I also have just finely chopped onions here. And this is yeah. something important in this, um, in this recipe. And then I have some pine nuts. And this is optional. If you would like to add pine nuts to it, that, um, that's great. If you don't, if you like, this is, um, um, you want to use something else, it's really up to you. I've, I've never had spiha yafawiya without pine nuts. Um, I have some bharat, sabah bharat, which is the seven spice that we use. And then salt. I have some pepper, black pepper. And here I have some tuna. And this is Ahmed I love that we add to our... <laughs> Put some ma and everything. Put some ma and everything. everything, you know. And if you like a little bit of heat, a little bit of heat, you could use, you know, like chili pepper, chili flakes, or, you know, Aleppo pepper. I'm just going to add maybe a little bit, but traditionally they don't actually use that. And of course, we're going to start with olive oil. So I'm going to add about two um, tablespoons of olive oil here. I'm just going to slightly heat that olive oil. You don't want your olive oil to be really neat. Yeah. I'm going to add to that peanuts. Just give it a really good, um, you know, just a fry to, to change the color to that golden color. As soon as we get the desired color, I'm going to take them out. And then we start with sauteing the chopped onions we have. Let's, let's be honest, gourmet, gourmet Palestinian food is delicious, but for me, maybe I'm biased, like akl al-fallah, like when it's prepared in the traditional fallahi way, it always tastes better to me. I don't know why. So I think we're going to agree a lot, Ahmed, me and you, <laughs> in this. Um, I also, um, I tell people usually in my classes that I'm, I'm teaching you something home-cooked meal that you don't even find outside. Right. Uh, and then at the same time, it comes with all these nice stories, you know, uh, and the heritage and the cultures that, you know, you just share with them to tell them how we eat it, how we serve it, how we, you know, uh, prepare it. So, Ahmed, I'm going to go ahead and add the meat, the lamb and beef that we have. Is there a way, is there a way to mix the meat and onions together properly or you can mix it however you want? No, you actually need to keep pushing. So I'm using the back of my uh, uh, spoon here and just pushing it like this will mix it with the meat and you're going to see how it's going to break it all together, you know. How do you know when it's cooked? So you want to make sure that all the liquid that comes, the juice that comes from the meat is evaporated. You still want it to be, um, to be soft and you want it to be, um, looks like wet, but not that much. Um, so it's still, you know, releasing lots of meat and lots of liquid. Um, ground meat um, does not need that much. I'm going to cut the dough into three, mm. hopefully equal parts. And I'm gonna take each one and just again get it into a bowl like this, the three of them. So you're basically preparing us to fill them. Yeah, we're gonna prepare actually before we do that. I have here also the um, extra virgin olive oil, the Palestinian olive oil we're talking about. And I'm gonna take the bowl as is, and I'm actually gonna dip it inside the olive oil like that. Okay. And I'm gonna take it and just keep it on the side. I'm gonna do the same thing with the second one. You need to always to cover your dough just to make sure that nothing, um, it doesn't dry out. So Ahmed, um, 
as I said, this is a very simple, the spices that we're gonna go, we're gonna add is simple spices. So we're going to add some salt. Here I have one teaspoon of salt. And the seven spices is the main ingredient is the olive spice. So we have the olive spice, we have cardamom, we have um, a little bit of cumin, we have cinnamon, there is black pepper. And um, mm -hmm. the one that I'm using here, Ahmed, I have some a little bit of rose petals actually. They're crushed and they're added to it. And it just really gives it a really nice, you know, aroma here. And of course, you know, cloves, as I said uh, before, and um, cardamom is something uh, important. I'm going to add Ahmed, a little bit of the chili flakes. And this is optional. And traditionally, actually, they don't add that. But if you like a little bit of heat, you know, you can add it. So this is a perfect example, Nadia, of this series, which is, you know, Palestinian cooking, but with a twist. So the chili in this case might be the, the twist and the rose petals. Yes, yes. Finish it with the, um, you know, sumac. And sumac also, it's up to you the amount that you need, you want to use. Mm. And I'm also going to add part of the finals to it. Great. I'm just going to add a little bit of <laughs> black pepper. It's very important. In this kind of a dish, can you use dips that are man, like pomegranate molasses? Absolutely, Ahmed. I call it the deliciousness of our cuisine. Like, <laughs> I don't... <laughs> Absolutely. I love that. You want to make sure that you don't have too much liquid in it, because when you stuff it inside, just a little bit taste... You know, Palestinians, despite having suffered so many losses over the years, we're proud of our culture, we're proud of so many things. And I have to say, even though I'm not a chef or even very good i can make mulakhiya and that's about it oh. but when when i you know when i have any opportunity to talk about olive oil or palestinian olive oil it's maybe my most proud <laughs> uh expression of my culture as a palestinian uh, ahmed i can't agree more i can't agree more this is something you know that is it's in our dna yeah no matter what it's our dna the first thing that actually you do when you even visit, you know, when you go visit Palestine, I'm just always taking pictures of olive, olive trees, you know, yeah, or like oil all over. So absolutely, I totally agree. And it does connect you to the land, even if the land is being annexed and the land is being stolen. You know, I'm not trying to get political, but there is a very moving experience. I think we can all agree we feel when we're with those olive trees. Usually when a new baby comes to the family, uh, the family plant an olive uh, tree by the name of that kid, you know, uh, that child. And then this child grows with that olive tree. By the time he's 20 years old, basically he's taking care of that olive tree. So it's like, as I said, it's in our DNA. It's like a continuation, you know, right. and it's really part of the struggle that we have as a Palestinian. Yeah, and a form, of, a form of resistance, which is, you know, arguably the food uh, itself is a form of resistance, much like planting those trees. Absolutely, absolutely. I can't agree more, Ahmed, with you about about it. So, Ahmed, I took just my um, one of the doughs, and as I said, you know, generously, I'm just gonna spread the my counter here with olive oil, and then I'm taking the, the dough, and then slowly, I'm just gonna start spreading it. Mm. This looks like the hard part. It's, you know, it's not that bad. As soon as soon as you feel like there is, it's drying out. You just take your palm and just dip it in the olive oil, and you come back again, and you spread like that. So you can use absolutely if you feel comfortable using um, rolling pin. It helps mm -hmm. also. Uh, they did not use rolling pins. Our <laughs> our you know mamas and grandmamas and aunties but um uh, we'll try our best yeah my grandmother when i would try to give her all these modern utensils you know <laughs> she'd roll her eyes and say some dismissive snarky comment so ahmed as you see i'm just you know going from the middle and just going out like that okay amazing, amazing. and we are looking for i think that's him though Ahmed, I'm just going to show you, you know, the, the dough here. If you see how paper thin, you know, mm -hmm, mm -hmm. and this is a nice, you know, way also to spread it just by going, just keeping pulling it from the side like this. So this is, if you see my hand from underneath, 
And as you see, I'm just gonna go one more time and set it. Um, shape, I'm gonna go ahead and cut the dough here into long strips like that. Okay. And again, I'm just gonna give it always, always, just try to spread it even thinner because this is how it's supposed to be. And I'm gonna take a little bit of that stuffing, the meat stuffing. Um, I always say that I am, I, I go a little bit generous with my stuffing, so you can go with a little bit less with the meat. Um, and I'm gonna give the sides another push like that just to make sure and then just wrap the dough around the meat see you make it look so easy ahmed practice makes it e practice makes it perfect <laughs> and um i always tell people like you can look me up and ask me question i will walk you through it if you you know decide to make it it should not be that um that hard um, practicing you said, the dough. Yeah. You said um, practice makes perfect. Mm -hmm. I think also you said that you're very generous with your meat. Seems to me <laughs> that, you know, Palestinian cooking is always generous. It's like a trademark of ours, at least in my household. Absolutely. Absolutely. This is uh, something we're famous for, Ahmed, you know. Um, I'm going to show you, Ahmed. So I, but after I put the meat, I wrap the dough uh, around it. I'm just going to show you, um, I'm going to take it like this. I'm going to go back to my olive oil. I'm going to dip my hand in the olive oil and just give it a squeeze all over like this. Mm. Okay. And then you're going to take one of the ends and just start Wrapping it around. What's the end? You want to the end uh, underneath. And this is how the dough and the spider is looking. I'm going to go ahead and just add it to my sheet. Now you can use, I'm using a parchment paper, but absolutely you can uh, generously. Um, Add olive oil to your tray and just add it on top of, of the tray. After I do this, Ahmed, I just go again and I just give it. It's all about the olive oil in this, in this recipe. I'm just give it another tap like that. Is there a certain time that you like to make this dish? When you have someone special visiting, I say, for me, for our family, I like to make it, let's say, oh, we're planning a hike, you know? Um, I like to prepare this the day before and just take it with us, you know, um, to enjoy it in the outdoors. Um, you know, if you if I'm doing a potluck, uh, I like to share usually Palestinian dishes when I go to my potlucks here. So I make sure to um, to make this is a great dish because you also get to talk about not only the dish, also the history that comes with it. And this will go to the oven. So after, um, so I started with 12 minutes, um, checked the color and then, you know, I added uh, another um, couple of minutes actually. And then I gave it a broil just to give it this really nice, I'm going to show you uh, golden color like that. So as soon as it comes actually from the uh, oven, comes out of the, from the oven, I go again with the olive oil like this and I just give it a little brush on top of it. And I'm also going to take my suma and sprinkle a little bit on top of it. I like to, after I do this, I just take a clean kitchen towel and just cover it um, loosely like this. This will help soften the dough a little bit. Um, just, you know, basically uh, keep the steam inside. And I do this for five to um, 10 minutes max. And then after that, it's time to, to, uh, to, to eat. <laughs> Sure. So give it a little bit of, uh, we're going to, I'm going to go ahead with extra pine nuts that I have. I'm just sprinkle a little bit on my platter like this. And of course, a little bit of green. And because I love pomegranate, it's also part of the Palestinian 
food. I'm just going to add a little bit of color to it with pomegranate. I have some yogurt with cucumber sauce. I have the sort of a lahi as well. And of course, you know, olive olives, both, you know, green and uh, black olives. And this is for to enjoy with this meal. So it looks delicious as a little reward for your helper. Uh -huh. I believe your husband has been taking care of a lot of the technological devices. Absolutely. Can he have a taste uh, for us on camera and tell us what he thinks? Yes, let's do Ayman. <laughs> Ayman, we can do it Ayman, together. Just help me set up, you know, for the for the video. It's very hot, by the way, just to make sure, you know, it's still. This is Ayman's, one of Ayman's favorites, by the way, just to let you know. <laughs> Give us the verdict. You know, I have to say, I usually taste it after she is done. But being here and listening to all the details, now I'm tasting all of the spices, all of the... So it makes a big difference. So my suggestion is before you eat, watch the whole video and then eat. <laughs> <laughs> yes, that's a great suggestion. We all should pay more attention to each step in the process. It is awesome. I'm, I'm tasting all the spices and all all the love that she kept talking about. So definitely the olive oil is, uh, is all over. Hey, thank you so much for joining us on Turning Tables and sharing with us your love uh, for thank cooking you. and the way you make it taste so delicious, as you said, with or without pomegranate molasses. Um, <laughs> and for that little twist, I think the twist was what? Rose petals and there was another little twist, chili uh, For the spices that we make, I, I, my spices has a little bit of uh, dried rose petals, but, petals, but then um, the twist was just a little bit of aleppo pepper I added, but you can add any chili pepper that you have. The other option is to eat it next to a shatta, our famous shatta on the side. Thank you guys so much for doing this. Thank you for um, um, producing, you know, the, uh, this program and focusing on food. And thank you so much for having me. It was really a pleasure to work with you.